Hi, everybody. Good evening. Damon Gonzalez from Latin Box Sports. Uh, we're here joining you here this evening. I know it's a little late. Uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in uh, with our show. Uh, we have another special guest coming on in a few minutes. We're looking forward to talking to him. Um, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Joseph Carrera from Front Proof Media, Will Montero from Sidestep Boxing, and uh, Xavier Porter from uh, Brooklyn Fights. Uh, we had the guys on the other day, and it was pretty awesome having them on. Um, we chopped it up, talk about boxing. Uh, it was really nice to have different media outfits, uh, professional outfits in the sport get together and start um, talking about some of these fights that most of the main media stream have been posting and projecting from the news that we're getting from the promoters and the matchmakers and, and what's going on in the sport. Uh, congratulations to uh, Fight Night Live uh, for putting on their show and streaming their show from Mexico yesterday. That was really awesome. That was pretty good to see boxing uh, and social media. Uh, it's the best is yet to come. Uh, you know, Tuesday we have uh, Top Rank. Uh, Top Rank will be returning uh, this Tuesday, so we're looking forward to the top rank bill. Uh, it's going to be an exciting bill with Shakur Stevenson. Uh, we have, a, again, a special guest that we're trying to get on the line with us uh, just in a few minutes. Uh, he's going to be joining us, former champion from Rochester, New York. Uh, he's now in ways of Florida, uh, Willie Monroe Jr. So we're looking forward for Willie El Mangus to join us in a few minutes. So he should be on any minute with us. All right. And again, like I said, man, I appreciate everybody tuning into the Slip Punches show. Uh, we had a good uh, live broadcast our last show. Uh, we got a couple of great fighters coming on all week. And we're just trying to stay busy. We're trying to do what we need to do to just reach out to the boxing world and, and put things out there. So without further ado... Everybody, welcome Willie Monroe Jr. to the broadcast. Willie, how you doing, champ? What's going on, man? Just chilling here with the fam. Oh, that's nice, champ. It's really, really good to hear from you and see you, man. We just Thank got you. you online. Get some updates, man. See how Willie Monroe's doing. Oh, we're doing good. We're doing good. Um, you know what? Let me set up here for you really quick. Okay, no doubt. On your room. Take it on your room. Like I said, everybody, we welcome Willie Moreau Jr. El Mangus to the broadcast with us uh, this evening. Uh, Willie's joining us uh, from his home, and uh, we're looking forward to chopping it up with him for a few minutes. Absolutely. Let me throw this charger on so we don't lose each other. Oh, no doubt, sir. Awesome. Awesome. Take my glasses off really quick so I don't look uh, too studious. <laughs> That's all good. Be you. Do you. <laughs> how you been? I'm good, my friend. It's been a minute, boy. How you been? I've been good, man. Just uh chopping it up with the family, man. Spent a lot of time, my wife and kids, you know, during this whole uh this uh COVID scare. You know, what I mean, just uh staying close to the family and the loved ones. Everybody's safe, everybody's doing good, I hope. Everybody's safe, everybody's doing good. You know, we um my, uh, my family we just overcame a uh, uh you know a house fire, but you know, God is good, you know. Oh, wow. Everyone's safe. Um, we're about three weeks removed from it. Everyone's safe. Okay. Um, people showed a lot of love, man, donated a lot of things, and uh, we're very, very happy for that. Well, Willie, definitely after the broadcast, get with me, and let's talk about it and see what we can do to get some, you know, if you need some further help and stuff like that. Absolutely. Willie, listen, you know, um, you've been very active, very busy. Uh, I've seen you uh, come down to Tampa Bay to do some training here in Tampa. How's that going for you? Everything's going good, man. You know, I've been down for all of my big fights I came down here and trained for, and uh, I just love Florida. You know, having a, uh, you know, Cuban heritage, man, it's almost like a second. So I love it down here. Oh, no doubt. There's no question about that. You know, I'll tell you what, you, you, you're a veteran of the sport. You've been in boxing a minute. You know, years ago, back in 2008, you made your, you, you with us? You made your pro debut up in Rochester, <laughs> knocking out your opponent back in the days. You remember that? Yeah. 
<laughs> that was the yeah when Ron Sesnick used to do the cards up there back in the days. Man, you've come a long way, man. Yeah. Talk about talk about this yeah. journey in the sport yeah. that you've passed through right. and. You good, champ? You there? Yep. Talk about how this journey's been for yep, you. I'm as, there. Can you still as, hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, Will, you with us? Okay. Yep, I'm there. I, I'm my Wi-Fi is on. I'm connected. Okay. Yeah, just to, Will, you with us? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's a bit of a delay, though. Okay, okay. Talk about how this journey's been for you in the in the middleweight division from two thousand from two thousand eight to now. It's it's been a it's been a, a unique and interesting one, I would say. Um, you know, I'm I'm I, I was a, a a very accomplished amateur. And, you know, coming off of the Olympic qualifiers, you know, I lost to Sean Porter and like, I think it was the semifinals or the finals of the Olympic qualifiers. You know, I, I didn't get to come off of out of the amateurs with that big financial push and everything behind me. So, you know, when I came in, when I turned pro, I had to like sell tickets to make my purse. You know, um, I, I kept two jobs the whole time I was training. You know, I worked two jobs from 2008 to 2014 while training for fights. I didn't start making enough money in fights until Boxino, to where I didn't have to work a job. And um, it's, it's been real grassroots, you know, pushing tickets out of my book bag, you know, training out of a garage for a couple years and finally turning that garage into a, a you know, a full fledged gym in Rochester, New York. It's been a, a crazy journey, but a very gratifying journey. You know, um, some moments not very favorable seemingly on the surface but they ended up turning into great things later so it's, it's been a it's been a cool journey now willie you you're fresh off of a win last year you know beating right. hugo centeno on on the pbc bill you know right. you clearly showed in the ring that you still have the fire and you're very young the best is yet to come for you talk about that yeah well i mean like i said uh you know the things that have happened to me in my career that may seem kind of unfavorable have now, you know, now I see where they play in my favor. You know what I mean? I'm 33 and where you will see, you know, most athletes around 33, 34, they start to fade, but I've been very disciplined and, and um, very uh, hard on my, on myself when it comes to my craft. And not only that, you have to think about the fact that I've had a 17, a 13, a 12, and now a 15 month layoff. So when you add all of those months up, I've missed about, I've been professional for 12 years, but I only really have miles on me of about six or seven years because I've missed so much time in between contracts and, and you know, bad managers and bad management, I should say. And, uh, you know, the, the rigmarole and, and nastiness of the business. So there's a flip side to the coin. I had to deal with that, but it also allowed me to be preserved to where, you know, I only have... 27 fights you know there's there are guys younger than me who have 40 fights already and you know it's almost like a a car you know what i mean you can get a newer car but if you put too many miles on it it's not going to be as good as a car that's a little older than it now i mean from from last looking at your last fight there's no question you you've reached a point in your career just by watching you in the ring you've grown so much you punch with the puncher right. you're a very intelligent fighter talk about these things Thank that you. you've developed um, it's just, I mean, not only the things that the, the, the skill that I was taught growing up and, you know, I had, a, like I said, I had a long amateur career. I had 142 amateur fights. You know, it's funny. I just cleaned out my grandmother's attic and I found all of my amateur title belts and medals. From wow. my, you know, yeah. From when I was a kid, I found my first medal from the silver gloves was in 1993. Champ, you got to post that, that stuff <laughs> on know? social media, man. We would love to share that with your fans, man. That'd be a good look. I, I put the belts, the, the titles and stuff. I want I put those uh -huh. in my story, but it's, you know, you know, I say that to say I have so much time in this and then not to mention being a pro and being, have being blessed enough to be in camps with people like, 
you know, Ishe Smith out there in, in camp with around people like him and Floyd Mayweather or Austin Trout. I had a great camp with Austin Trout, Miguel Cotto. Um, who else? Andre Berto. The list Randall is long. Bailey. Yeah, you know, while I was coming up, I was able to be in camp with these guys and help them, but I learned so much in these camps. And it's made me more comfortable with being who I am. It's almost like Dave Chappelle said, you know, it took me a while to learn how to be myself. So so many different guys that I idolize, like the Roy Joneses and the Floyd Mayweathers and, you know, and, and these different Sugar Ray Leonard's and different guys. But it took me, you know, 10 or 11 years as a fighter to learn how to fight like myself. And I think I'm a little more comfortable in the skin of, of the of the, being the, the true Mongoose. <laughs> Champ, shout out to Armin Sands. He's joining us, heavyweight from Debella Entertainment. Shout out Yo. to Jim, Jimmy and all the fellas that are watching right now online. Take What's us up, back, fellas? man. Take us back to when you were shorty. When did you and how did you get the name El Mongoose? How did that come about in, in your life? Well, that name came up a little, a little later after I had turned pro. Uh, uh, a close friend of the family named Sammy Torres, man. Me and this dude's been, we were cool. We've been cool for years. We did music and everything together. And um, at first they were calling me, you know, my background. I'm, you know, I have Cuban heritage in my background yes. on my other side. So, you know, we've always had the Latin flavor around. But, you know, for a long time as an amateur, I trained in a primarily Hispanic gym. So, you know, I, my Spanish got better. And then, you know, they were because of my, my skill set, and my speed and my reflexes, they were calling me El Gato, El Gato, El Gato. So, you know, because of my reflexes. But there was uh -huh. a, a fighter from um, from the Bronx. His name was uh, Frankie Figueroa. And he already yes. had the name. Yeah, he already had okay. the name. And he made that name big for himself. So I'm like, I can't copy that name. And my, my boy Sammy was like, man you know, you fight more like a mongoose. And I was like, you know, I've heard of that animal, but, and he was like, you know, let me show you some videos on how a mongoose fights a cobra. And after I watched one video of a mongoose fighting a cobra, uh -huh. I said, say, or that's my name. I said, you know, like, it looks like me. It's very slick. You know I mean? It dances around, it's furry. It, it looks like a, you know, a, a, a little squirrel, like it wouldn't hurt anything. But I mean, when it's time to turn up, it turns up, you know what I mean? And, and, they hunt black mambas and, and some of the most deadly snakes. That's a suck, man. That's a great story. See, this yeah. is important. You know, there's so many people right now during quarantine that we're all going through in our lives and stuff. This is right. great for the boxing world that we all reach out and connect like this. And it's so important. It's great to hear these stories from right. champions like you. Thank so, you. So Willie, listen. Um, we got just a couple of more things to cover. But I kindly want to ask you: reach out and connect with the fans, man. Give them a shout out, whatever it is you want to say from your heart. Uh, I just want to thank everybody who's following me, man. Um, I'm appreciative for for all of the love, man, and even the hate. You know what I mean? Because you can't have love without hate. You know, one balances out the other. So I'm just appreciative for everything, man. Um, every step in my career, when I look back, you know, I'm I'm proud of myself. And, and I'm proud of the fact that, uh, you know, I do have some hardcore fans. I have a cult following that's just like, you know, there for me. Like, you know, they hit me up with personal messages, you know what I mean? And I, I hit them back and uh, I'm just grateful. So if you ever hit me up with a personal message, if we've ever had a personal conversation, uh, a heartfelt conversation, just know that it, um, it was taken serious and it was appreciated. And thank you. Champ, listen, man, I always appreciate you. You've always been real. You've always kept it real with me. Um, definitely, man, you're just an awesome dude. And we, we are so blessed to have you on the show with us, man. I want to ask you a question because we just saw recently you were with um, five-time world champion veteran Antonio Tava in the gym. Right. And the video was very impacting. Right. You know, it was very impacting because Tava's one of those guys when when Antonio speaks and right. he talks to a fighter, you listen. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah I, talk I, about that. How did that go, man? Well, I tell you, I, ironically enough, you know Roy Jones is my idol, right? Oh, no doubt. Yes. So so when I first met Tava. I was kind of scared, kind of nervous, like, oh, man, this is the dude that knocked out my idol. And he was just so 
humble, you know what I mean? And his son, I got to meet his son like two days after meeting him, Antonio Tyra Jr., who's a phenomenal undefeated uh, junior middleweight down here. And uh, it was just dope, man. He's like, Tarver's just one of those guys. I mean, you got to think about it. This guy is one of the pound for pound best fighters that ever graced the planet. And he still has, you know, the humility to sit and give you any type of information you ask for and give it to you with conviction and 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 re give it real heartfelt. You know what I mean? He's just a real, real good guy, man. And, and I told him, I said, hey, I said, you caused one of the biggest upsets in boxing, man. I said, I need some of that energy off of you. And, you know, he just he gave me some insight on where he had to go up here to pull up pull, to pull off such an amazing feat against a, an amazing fighter like Roy Jones Jr. And God willing, I get the Canelo fight. That's the type of energy I'm going to need if I'm going to looking if I'm looking forward to causing upset. That's great, champ. Champ, real quick, quick shout outs for people listening in. Mark Reyes Jr., Mark Reyes Sr., they oh, on the hook. They that's... they can't wait to see you back in the ring. Yo, Brian Bomag, b and &B, bro, Omaha. They on check with us, man. Yo, what's going on, Brian? Willie what's Moreau on? in the house doing this thing. Also, Blue Chip, Blue Chip Martin, that's my people. You know he what's... here in Florida, right? Oh, yeah? Yes, Blue Chip is training. He's sparring and training right here in Tampa, bro. I got to link you with him. Oh, yeah, I was about to say we got to link then. Yes, yeah, no have... doubt. He's here. He's local. So definitely okay. I want to link you with him, man. He's a good dude, man. He he fought a couple of times out there in L.A. with um, right. Tom Loeffler. Um, right. He's fought in the Canelo uh, GGG card. Kid oh. is, kid's a great dude, man. Really great dude. And he's actually going to be doing something on the local scene uh, coming up in the next month or two once, oh. you know, the boxing continues to resume on the Florida level. So, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> I was so happy when I moved down here, man, because Florida just seems like a hub for fighters, man. I mean, like like you said, we got Mark Reyes. We have uh, Ivan Franco, my little brother Tommy Logan. We got Brian. What's up? Freaking Everybody's here. I mean, like, the list goes on and on and on, and it's just so many dope fighters here, man. It's, it's definitely great. It's a buffet for boxing, and, and yeah. it, it's great because – Yo, there's nothing like when fighters connect with other fighters because, you know, reality from all levels, from boxers to trainers to to media, yo, we're a community. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's definitely a good look. Willie, yo, how champ, how can all the fans that, that are getting to know you and the fans, of course, that do know you, how can they follow you on social media? Uh, everything is Willie Monroe Jr. or Willie Almongus Monroe Jr. So it's just my whole fight name. If you put my name in, it'll pop, pop up. I'm pretty much verified everywhere. Thank God for that. So you just put my name in, Willie Monroe Jr., you'll find me. So right now, definitely, you're in shape and you're ready to go waiting for the call. Is that right, yep. Willie? Yep, absolutely. Just waiting. waiting Willie, listen. Champ, we, we really appreciate you and we thank you for taking time to come on the Slip Puncher Show. Kindly right, again, give a shout out to your fans. Oh man, shout out to everybody that's following me Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everybody that supports, everybody that's following the brick by brick movement. You know, I truly believe that you can't put a movement or a brand out there if it's not a path you've actually walked. And I've had to walk that diligent path of building my empire brick by brick. This wasn't no easy cut put together. So it's a lot of people that are on that brick by brick train, it's a lot of people that are like influenced by it you know what i mean it's not just a brand it's a meaning and uh i like to shout out to everyone that's just on that brick by brick train man because it's truly a way of life you know what i mean if you build your empire brick by brick it'll be so solid to where no one can it's just like the big bad wolf with the three little pigs no doubt <laughs> <laughs> hey tam from all the years i've known you man thank you so much for your professionalism you've always been professional you've always been upbeat and i appreciate thank you very much Thank you. Thank you, champ. We we hope to have you back on the Slip Punches show soon. You already know that, Dane, man. You've been down with me since, the, since jump. So, man, I, I definitely show you love and give you anything you want, man. That's a good look, champ. Appreciate you, man. God bless you. I God bless your family. And hit me up on the side so we could talk, all right? I definitely will. You remember the first thing you told me when, when we met in, in Tampa? Talk to me. You said, when the fighter sneeze, I'll be there to wipe his nose. That's right. <laughs> hey, look at Hi. your baby girl. Hi. Yeah. <laughs>
he's looking for some attention because uh today's my son's birthday and he got all the attention and she's a spoiled one so now she's looking okay. for all the okay happy birthday happy birthday wishes to your son and hi hey, hi <laughs> <laughs> that's super awesome we appreciate thank you champ you're a wonderful person thank you man god bless for having yeah, me on god bless god bless take god care bless. bye bye <laughs> peace <laughs> thank you everybody for joining us on the slip punches show this is damon gonzalez from Lion box sports we'll be tuning in tomorrow you have a great evening bye-bye